I'll make this intro pretty quick, but simply put, we're going to be building this contraption behind me. This right here is basically a farm for XP, and how it works is pretty simple. This massive box right here is a small cactus farm. I mean, I call it small, but look at the size of it. It's massive. That's what she said, lol. As you can see, pretty simply, these glass panes will break the cactus or the cacti once they grow to the next level. Cactus farms are pretty simple to understand. Once cacti grows to this level, these blocks or glass panes in this case will break them. They'll then flow down into this water stream where they'll then be transported into these hoppers, which will then be transported into this furnace. If you play Minecraft for a while, you'll probably know that if you try to smell something that's got like a massive quantity, so if you try to smell a massive stack of iron, coming back from a massive mine session, you'll notice that after you've smelted the whole stack, and if say you not took any of it out, you'll get all the XP that's built up from it. However, I bet you didn't know that if you have a system set up like this, so that if the cacti, or in this case the cacti, go through into another chest, the XP contents stay in the furnace. So when you take out the entire, well, when you take out one item from the furnace, you'll get all the XP that's built up from all the cacti that's been smelted in this case. So if I set myself to survival very quickly, like so, that spectator. And so when I go to take the content out of the furnace, what should happen is that I should get all the XP from all this cacti been smelted. I first spray add a lever for this hopper right here, so there we go. Now it's locked, so whatever content will come through here, it should just stay in its place. Let's see. Hello there. Yep, there we go. And now I should get a bunch of levels. Watch down here, guys. You'll see it, where my cursor is right here. There you go. There's all quite a few levels. Obviously, this is not that much, but that is the idea of it. You'll get a lot more levels if you had this running for hours and hours. The benefit of this is that if you have, say, a couple AFK farms around your area, you can add this to the collection, and while you're sitting around at your mob farm to get points, so not points, like, say, gunpowder or skeleton bones, stuff like that, just general mob farms, you can also grind out for XP as well, so when you come back, you can just go up to a furnace, lock the system, and take whatever comes out of it and get the XP from it. It's really cool, and it's very efficient. So how's about I stop bragging on about how this machine works and get onto the actual tutorial. I'll explain some stuff while I'm doing the tutorial, but let's get onto the main tutorial. Now, you're probably not going to need as big a space as this, but I like to see if I have enough room just for, well, any sort of contraption I build. First things first, you're going to need these materials to actually build it. You can pause the video right now and have a look at the materials necessary, but you guys get the idea on how the contraption works, and as I go on, I'll show you the materials you'll need for the actual construction of the build. You want to start by placing the two chests, I would say preferably in the floor, because it's a bit easier with the hopper going at the back of it, and the first on top of it. Next, you want to take a hopper coming at the back of it, and place a hopper on top. That way, these contents will, these hoppers will represent the contents for where the fuel's gonna go. So this will be for the bamboo, and this will be for the cacti. For simplicity's sake, I'm gonna keep um all the contents separate, so I'll not go back and forth between the two of them. I'll just do one at a time. So let's start off the cactus. Now for the contents and building the cactus farm, these are, all right, I should say right here, forget everything, it's in my inventory. You need these resources. Exclusively, these two right here, the oak planks and the oak logs are just for like design purposes, but you guys just need to have any block that can be used to make, excuse me, a framing around the actual McCullough build. Now to start off this cactus section, you're going to need to first place a few hoppers down so you can get the hopper line going. So place one top of the furnace, or the hopper that's above the furnace, you do two on the left and then you do, how many is it? I think you do six, no, eight on the right, so you do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you should have, a, what do call it, 11 hoppers next to each other in this kind of formation. Then you want to take some bricks or logs or wood, any kind, of, any kind of block, and place them like so. So you want to go back 18 blocks. From these hoppers, 17 blocks back. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. That is how big it should be with the hoppers and the blocks. And now you just want to fill in the bottom section of this. So I'll be back in a moment. Notice. Although seeing as I have cheats because I'm in creative mode, I guess it wouldn't be a bad thing if I just do this. Easy. And now, once you have this formation of blocks, you want to go the start of the stone brick section and go back eight blocks from where you've started. So two, four, six, eight. And right here is where your water is going to be placed so the items can be flown down towards the hoppers. So if you've done this right, the water should stop directly at the hoppers. Yep, there we go. And now you, you should have something like this. Next, you want to do the same thing. Well, first you want to actually build up another layer. So 
you want to fill in this section right here. Hey, wait, I think I've done this wrong. Okay, um, I might have just done this wrong. Give me a minute. Okay, what I said before about the length this thing is wrong. You want to, well, first just do what I'm doing right here. You want to take this section right here and fill it up with, well, not all this, but do this kind of thing right here. You want to take, from the source block, you want to go back eight blocks. So this, then seven more. And then just want to fill us in because these two right here, I've kind of overshot it. That's just for the design of the build. And so once you're finished, you should have something like this. Next, you want to take these walls and just, well, border up the area so the water doesn't flow out because that would be a disaster. And then you want to take your water bucket and place your water down. And if I've done this correctly, yep, you should have this kind of motion here once you've put all your water in. The water should be directly, yep at the line of the water. So in the end, you should have this kind of formation. Next, you want to go to the back of the build where the back section of the water is and go by five blocks. This way, you'll have a bunch of walls to stop the cacti from falling out into oh, stuff like this. You don't want this to be happening. And then once you're done, you should have something along the lines of this. A massive water pool with walls all around it. Also, I give you a fair warning, do this kind of formation at the front so that none of the cacti fall out. In case they overshoot it, I'm not sure if it's a thing, but do it just in case. Now, from here, you want to go to the back of the build and you want to go in a block from each corner and do this kind of formation with stone bricks. So, you want to place a block like so. Oh, sorry, you want to skip a block, place a block, skip, place, skip, place. And by the end of doing that kind of formation, you, you should have five individual blocks like this. Then, you want to repeat the same process like so down the entire thing. And now, once you get to this kind of section here, you should have this kind of formation right here where skip block, skip block kind of formation things should be right on the edge. And once you get to here, you want to do the same kind of thing, except do it a block lower. So the same block, skip, block, skip kind of thing, except a block lower. This way, it will be as close as it can to the water, minimizing the amount of height needed for the building process. And then once you're finished that, you should be at this kind of formation right here, where you have two segments, one section, one block higher than the other. And the same thing for the lower section as well. They're both the exact same, just one of them is uh, what do we call it? A block lower from the other. You should probably raise this up a little bit. So, I say just raise it up to the top because this way you'll have, what we call it, protection from all the blocks so that none of the cacti will fall out whatsoever. So far, you should have your cactus farm looking like this. It should be a big box of some sorts with this kind of pattern in the middle. If you need a second to look at this, then go ahead. I'll give you a few angles for how you build it. Now, once you've done that, you want to come down to each of these pieces and place sand with cacti on top of that. You want to rinse and repeat this process for the entire thing, so sand on each of them with cacti on top. And once you've done that, you should have this kind of pattern right here. Now there's one more thing for this upper section right here you need to do, aside from putting a roof on it, but that's different. You want to take glass panes or iron bars or fences, anything like this, anything that's a block of some sorts, and place them in this kind of formation right here. You want to put a block on top of the cactus, and then you want to put a glass pane directly next to that. So you have this kind of pattern right here. You want to rinse and repeat the same process for the entire... Oh, crap. That's not good. Okay, fixed. Like I said, you want to take the um, glass pane thing or just the procedure and do the same thing for each of the rows. So you should have this kind of pattern for each of the rows. That way the cacti will break when it comes in contact with the glass pane. And then once you have that done, you should have this kind of awkward but neat looking like formation like an army. You have like individual soldiers like lining up. You don't necessarily need to put a roof on top of it, but I recommend you do. And so now if I speed up the game spec text or just the <laughs> the random game text. Look at this site right here. This is actually quite funny. You should be seeing that the furnace should be, yep, you should see the content start to fill up. I'm just trying to spack down to normal because reasons. And so that's the cactus section right there. Now we're onto the bamboo segment for the fuel. Now for the bamboo section, which is the fuel section of the XP farm, you're going to need these items right here, including some items to create some sort of structure around it you're gonna need these items right here so and preferably oh yeah right here a lever to well lock this hopper like I showed before me locking the hopper with a lever to get the contents out of it and so to start us off you want to take a few hoppers and well first build this kind of formation right here we have a few hoppers sitting behind the furnace going into this hopper so you want to go behind here and place a hopper here and a hopper right here With two blocks over here, but this be this will make more sense in just a second. You want to take your minecart power rails and place one right here. Over here, you want to place a lever on the back side. This way, it'll power the rail, and you'll it'll power the power rail, and you'll be able to push the minecart off. Next, you want to take a few stone bricks and pull them out like this. Three preferably will be alright, but I think two is alright. And then put rails on top of that. 
Next, I want to go down one block like so. I'm just going to remove this to make it easier for myself to understand. So, stuff like this. Oh, wait, yeah. You need to use this section right here of powered rails. Oh, that's the void. Next, I want to put some powered rails down like so, and you'll get this kind of formation like this. Put a lever next to that so you can power it as well. Next, you want to dig out a small hole like this, like a small little trench with rails running through them like so. So in this case, from this power rail, you want to dig one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks from this power rail. So it'll be something like this. You want to dig um, eight blocks along from here. And right at the end, place a powered rail with something to power it, like so. Or you can, excuse me, place something underneath it or just a resin block or well, preferably a lever or a torch and you'll power it in a hidden fashion. Next, you want to take some grass blocks and place them above each of the rails, except for this rail right here, this makes sense in a second, but for now, do this kind of formation right here. Place grass blocks on top of each of the rails and leave this rail exposed. Hey guys, Fusion Moth here. I want to recorrect a mistake that I made when I was explaining the building the tutorial for the bamboo segment. The bamboo farm itself is not enough to sustain the amount of fuel required for the cactus smelting process. And for that case, the solution to this is on screen right now. Right now you should see on screen a couple of images to recorrect the issue that was being the shortage of bamboo. The images on the left side are the before and the arrows that will take you over to the images on the right side are the after. If you guys have been following this tutorial on building an XP bank, then I recommend you pause the video right now and recorrect the mistakes that I've given you. Also, for these images right here, the blue concrete signifies the old columns that were previously put down, and the red concrete signifies the new columns that will put in. So in this case, it's been upgraded from 7 to 15. So 8 more columns of bamboo have been added to the farm. And also down here, you can see that I've added a repeater at the bottom of the um, redstone staircase so that all the observers at the top can trigger all the pistons down the bottom, no matter where the, um, I'm gonna call it, the signal's coming from. That's pretty much all I had to say. Now, back to the video. Next, take any block of any kind. I'm going to use stone brick in this case and surround each of the stone, not stone brick, um, grass blocks with whatever block you've chosen. And also, this is why you left this rail exposed because you need to have room so that the minecart can travel up and down because once it comes back, if you do this, it cannot travel down. Damn. Next, you want to take your blocks of any kind and build up one more layer like this. Take your pistons, um, you're gonna need seven for this one, and place them at the back of the build. Also do this, just so it just so it looks neat. And now, depending on how high you want to go with the bamboo, it can vary, but I suggest you go from the pistons, build up, I'd say, seven blocks, I think is good. Build up six or seven blocks, and you should be fine. You want to do the same thing from, well, the height thing. You want to build up all the walls to this height level, just like so. So, so you should have something like this. Now, same with the height thing, depending on how frequent you want your farm to be harvested, you can either break a few blocks for the observers to go in, or you can break all of them for each and every one to be broken. But preferably, I like having this sort of um, formation like here, where you have one in the center, oops, one in the center, one on the left, and right. And now I put a roof on the bad boy just to make it look nice. Depending on what you want to use, I'm using stone brick because it's a simple tutorial and it's not exactly a building tutorial, it's a resin contraption tutorial. Next you want to take your bamboo and place them directly at the bottom of the contraption. And then once you've done that, take glass and fill up the entire front of it. That was fast. And then you should have something like this. Next you want to come around back and well you should see that both your pistons and observers are exposed. So where your observers are, place a line of blocks with redstone on top of that, right, right next to it. Now, pay attention to this part because it can be a bit confusing. You want to take a line of blocks coming from this section right here, right in the center of the observer line, or the redstone line next to observers, and build this sort of staircase coming down. So, three down in this sort of passion, fa passion, I meant fashion, and then another three coming down like so. You should have something like this. Then take your redstone line and follow it down and once you get down here just put blocks right next to your pistons and then redstone on top of that. This way the observers will be able to activate every single one of them. No matter where the thing is activated, whether it's on the left, left, right or center, all the pistons will be activated as you can see by this example right here. Be sure to build the redstone staircase in the middle. That way you can get all the pistons to push them or just to break the What's it called? Bamboo. And then once you've done that, you want to take your minecart, um, micro hopper, just a hop minecart, and place it down. And now you should be complete, I believe. Let me just check. Yeah. You should be complete. You should start seeing, yep, there you go. You should start seeing your bamboo flow down through 
A furnace and a bunch of cacti stacked up. This has been farming while I've been building the other section. Jesus, that's fast. And so all you have to do now is just sit an AFK in front of the farm and you should have basically infinite, well, XP. Also, if you want this to, if you want this redstone to be a lot more neat, then I recommend taking some sort of block and just covering up in this sort of fashion, like so. So take any sort of block and just extend the back out like this. That's what I mean by this. You should have this sort of formation going all the way up to the roof, and once you get to the top, just cover it up and. It should be basically covered up and you won't have this exposed redstone. Now, these two structures right here look quite ugly, but like I said, this is just a rough tutorial. You don't need to follow this exact design, but if you don't care about the exterior, then this is for you. And like I said, you'll get stacks upon stacks upon stacks of cacti just from sitting here in AFK, as well as bamboo. The only downside is that the cacti, although being easy, all the resources are really easy to get, aside from being the, what's we call it, observers. Speak of the devil. Like I said, aside from the downside of being you need to go to the nether to get some quartz to get the observers, you also need to find a jungle to get bamboo, whether it be by killing pandas or just finding it in a bamboo jungle of some sorts. Fairness guys, that's gonna do it for today's video on this Minecraft tutorial of just building an XP bank. If you liked today's video, then why not subscribe and turn on notifications by hitting that little bell icon once you subscribe because along with this kind of stuff, I also do Smash Brothers, Splatoon and Among Us. So if you like that, then subscribe and turn on notifications by hitting that bell. Fairness guys, thank you all for watching today's video. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!